Welcome parents to our Codathon 2021 program overview. We're excited to speak with you this evening about our upcoming program that's happening really soon. Um, it is Saturday, we're sending this out to you and so it will be next weekend. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that you know, everybody understands the difference between this year's program and prior year's programs. So if you've never had your child participate or you're a student and you've never participated in this program before, this will be easy. But for those who've, who've participated in the past, you might have a few questions. So we thought we'd help by recording this session and giving you some information. And we thought we'd be, be as thorough as we possibly could. Of course, we probably won't get every question answered, but if you do have questions, please uh, email us at cap at wctd.org and we'll answer anything you need from us. We wanna make sure we have a successful year as we transform this sixth year of this program into all digital this year uh, due to the challenges with the pandemic. So here we go. A little bit about our organization. Our mission is to excite, inform, and educate students about careers in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We do that through a collaboration of community engagement, educators, government and technology industry resources to bring uh, to really connect the dots so that students understand what careers are out there that are growing, uh, what new careers are coming in more in demand, and what are the skills they need to do to embrace these exciting opportunities. Uh, and what are the new careers that are blended with technology and um, traditional um, workforce skills like new bioengineering, bioinformatics, uh, there's so many new science and technology careers that are out there today and they require some level of problem solving and coding. Our en employers are looking for students graduating with skills that can take them into the business and that they can immediately give value to organizations because they understand how to use technology to solve problems and how to work with technology as a tool to help support businesses grow. A little bit about the Codathon. It is an annual community event, and we say community event because it has a lot of moving parts and a lot of people involved. It's not just about an online program with a bunch of students learning to code. <laughs> um, we bring in mentors and educators and community partners to, to make this all work. This, uh, it's a very broad uh, impact program so that it, it is delivered nationally and globally. This year's program, of course, we're transforming to entirely digital, so it's allowed us to kind of stretch, really create a broader impact to different locations around the country. And so we're excited this year to have the students um, be able to collaborate and problem solve with, stu with students from different locations instead of having just the, the team members in their own community areas. So it, it'll be a unique opportunity to get students really learning what it's like to collaborate and work across time zones and cultures. So these students will work in teams to build a conceptual business that supports the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And each year we integrate different technologies in, into the projects. Uh, last year we did drones in their projects. This year the teams are going to utilize Tinkercad and 3D modeling as a component of their project. And how to integrate uh, into their projects, will they'll, it'll be up to the teams, um, but they'll uh, learn about Tinkercad, learn about 3D modeling, and then decide how their problem will support this integration of technology. And it's really about showing students and, and having students demonstrate how technology plays a role in problem solving today and really getting them to be excited about being social entrepreneurs. A little bit of a table of contents here of what I'm gonna cover in the next few minutes here. Um, what should students expect is gonna be on slide five and so on, I'm not gonna read all these slides, but if you're watching this video and you wanna spin up to one of those locations, you can. <laughs> so it'll help you see where different information is and it'll help you hopefully understand what this video contains before you start watching it. What to ex uh, the students will experience during the program. This is already, we've already done, the we just ended today the last session of level three. So they've already had since January 4th, they've been learning to code online with our instructors and our, um, our team. And so level one beginners are learning HTML and CSS. Uh, level two has been learning JavaScript and level three has been learning advanced web development with React. Now, please keep in mind, if you're watching this video and your students have just registered, we know that. A little challenging trying to get everybody on the system. And so we understand that happens and we don't wanna not have somebody be able to participate because they couldn't participate in the training. So we've recorded all of the training sessions your students, or you, if you're watching this and you're a student, you just need to get logged in with your credentials and you need to get in and watch the videos before next Friday, okay? If you do that, you'll be all good to go. 
All right. Now, important dates to remember is um, on Monday of this week, the 25th, we're going to have our first team building uh, session. You'll get to meet your team members and you'll get to, you know, kind of get to know them through a fun team building activity. And that starts on Monday. So please don't miss it. And remember, all these times that we're mentioning are all Eastern Standard Time. So if you're in another part of the country and you're participating, please make sure you remember that. Wednesday night, we'll do another team building activity. We do this intentionally. We want to do lots of team building activities to get the students bonded and really working well together. We know through research that if teams uh, have make a personal connection and get to know each other better, they'll understand um, how to work better together and be able to deliver uh, their projects much more successfully. So our experience is in the past is the more we do team building, the better the program goes. All right, and then the program, the actual program where they're going to be coding all weekend starts on Friday, the 29th. Students will be asked to log in and get ready for and be checking in with their mentors around 430. We'll kick off at five, but we'll be um, you know just really making sure the students are getting online and ready to go. And then we'll kick off with 5 p.m. Students will be online until probably midnight or later. It's going to be up to them and, and what how, how they work together and how much they want to get accomplished. The teams will make those decisions. This is all about learning time management here. And, and also learning time management and getting some sleep and balancing, um, having fun with coding and, and making sure they're rested up for the next day. We will start um, right uh, Saturday morning again and then of course on Sunday. I'm going to go into a little more detail of the agenda coming up here. Again, reminder that Monday and Wednesday are some really important dates that they have to make sure they're present for. And then starting off here again, I mentioned that 4.30 is our check-in for our students and we'll kick off promptly at 5. They'll start a little activity using uh, doing some competitive crossword um, puzzles to kind of reinforce some of the concepts and uh, the, some of the vocabulary they've learned in the training sessions, and we have prizes for this. We have um, gift cards, e-gift cards that we'll be putting out there and giving students who win the bragging rights online, our online learning environment. Uh, we'll encourage students to eat with their teams. We're putting 30 minutes in there for lunch or for dinner because we really feel that's plenty of time to, to eat for them. And so they'll get their food, come back and hang out and hopefully uh, continue to build those relationships with their teams. Uh, at 6.30, we're going to be doing a GitHub training. We have sent students videos for this, but we wanted to give an opportunity to kind of get dig in a little deeper on this. Learning GitHub is a critical skill for these students, for uh, especially if they're planning on going into software engineering as a career. Uh, we're going to, uh, this year we've introduced some wireframing to help students to really kind of brainstorm their ideas of what their website's going to look like. 8.30 to 9, we're going to just do an overview of the entire project, re reinforce the rubric. They have access to the rubric. Um, we'll be um, showing them where it is and then talking through some of the scoring and what they need to do to make sure they're successful for the judges on Sunday. And then from 9 to 10.30, um, we're going to do an activity with the students where we're going to be doing some team uh, brainstorming and Kanban. And, and this is really about let them deciding what project they're going, what problem they're going to solve and how that aligns to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then at 10.30, we're going to be doing uh, Kahoot. <laughs> um, and so we'll have some prizes there with that as well. Um, it's just, again, reinforcing some concepts and vocabulary with the students and just having some fun. And then 11 to 12.30, we're, gonna, we're trying to do a movie night where we can uh, have all the students online watching a movie together and, and just chatting in the chats and having some, uh, some fun bonding. And then we have our weekend schedule for Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8.30. We've got our morning stretch with Maestro. We're hoping the students will join him. Uh, we'll see how that plays out, but it's important for the students to really get exercising when they're going to be on the computers all day and doing a good stretch before they start the day of coding. And we'll talk about why that's important and you know, give them some tips and tricks on stretching for the weekend um, through Maestro, who's a personal trainer. Again, breakfast with the teams. Nine o'clock is going to be project time and office hours. Now, the project time and office hours that we've, we've carved out here is the, um, when the students will be working on their projects together in their teams, in their breakout rooms. And also, um, they can go into the breakout office rooms with their instructors and get help if they need to. We want students to take advantage of it. Our instructors are there to support them. And then we will, our, our mentors will be responsible for getting the students back into the general session whenever we, we do transition from the team uh, breakout rooms into the general sessions. And that's the, um, for this morning, we'll be have Saturday morning, we'll be doing a Tinkercad and a Paint 3 uh, discussion and, and kind of a little bit of a learning activity for the students. Uh, again, team building and a little bit of learning at the same time. They'll break for lunch. We did give them an hour for lunch on Saturday. 
And then on um, at one o'clock, we're gonna jump into a fun activity, again, team building. And then at two to 5.30, there's office hours and working on their projects. Uh, again, um, we'll take a little bit of a, um, a, a break from 5.30 to six and talk about how they submit their projects to make sure the teams all understand that and they're clear on that. They'll break for lunch, or sorry, for dinner. And then they will, so they'll break for dinner. Then they'll do a fun game of bingo from 7 to 7.30. They'll have prizes again for that. And from 7.30 to 10 is again the project time and, and office hours. Kahoot again and movie night again. And then moving on to Sunday, again, morning stretch with Maestro, breakfast with the teams, uh, project time and office hours, um, submit their projects, lunch and post their assessments. This is really important. They'll have to have their projects submitted by 11.30. 12 is like our drop dead time frame that they have to submit by. And then um, they'll take a lunch and while they're taking their lunch, they'll be asked to finish their post assessments. Our mentors will make sure that's done. If the students do not finish their assessments or anybody on the team does not complete their assessments, they will not be allowed to present and compete for the judges. That is one of the things we're doing this year to make sure we have those assessments done. Our assessments are really important for us to learn what we did well, what we could do to improve. And we can't, if we don't get that feedback, we can't make things better for the students year over year. Um, the pre-assess or the um, the pre-presentation and judge intro starts at one o'clock. So, will parents can log on at that time. You will be receiving this the um, links for this. We'll talk more about that further in, the, in this in this uh, presentation. And then from 1.30 to 5, the presentations will kick off. The students will be each pre presenting. There will be, um, we're not sure based on the teams and everything that plays out, we'll have a better understanding of this and we'll provide further updates on this, but there will be multiple sessions going on because we are having presentations and judges for levels one, two, and three. The students are competing separately. They're not competing against each other. We um, wanna make sure that it's fair and that the, the skill sets are, are the same and aligned for the judges. And then of course, after the judges do all their adding up or the tallying of the scores, we'll announce the final winners and we'll wrap up for the program at around 5.30 at the latest. Okay, a little bit about our platform and what we're using for the program. It is uh, Microsoft Teams, so students will um, uh, be utilizing Teams to collaborate and work together. They'll be using breakout rooms to do that, and all of our sessions will be happening in that Teams environment. Again, inside Teams, we, you know, students can have one-on-one -on -one and group communications with instructors, mentors, their team members, and all the participants in the program. Uh, we'll host general sessions with all the students in the large general channel meeting. Uh, the teams and mentors will move um, the, from the general session to their breakout sessions with their teams and their mentors. And so they'll be moving kind of back and forth between those two locations throughout the program. And the mentors will help them keep them, um, you know, accountable where they need to be and make sure they know what the schedule is. Uh, Teams um, provides a, uh, a number of industry tools that allows for real-time collaboration where students can work together on their projects and seek help in our office hours from industry instructors and mentors. Uh, and they can share files here and again have group interactions. Uh, we've got our assessments integrated into this um, and of course any third-party pieces like Kahoot. All the happenings will happen inside of Microsoft Teams. A little a few vocabulary things for the students and parents just for awareness. General channel is, think of it as an auditorium. This is where we'll meet when giving presentations and giving uh, students directions for next steps in the day. Breakout rooms, let's think of this as private conference rooms where the students will be working um, with their team members. And then we have files and folders where they'll be able to store content with each other um, overall, the program wide, as well as individually in their teams. Tabs are where we'll store resources and make things easy for students to get the stuff so they don't have to go from one system to another. Everything is it's, all, it's just an online classroom and think of it as all the things that they need are inside here. <laughs> so they won't have to go outside to any other products to get to what they need. Everything is in here, There's, including a class notebook. Um, think of it like a physical notebook, but it's online. It's got a collaboration space, a content library. Students have their own private notebooks to keep notes and reflections for the program and get feedback to our organization. On Monday night, teams will be um, meet each other for the first time, and this is a really important uh, session, so please make sure that you are there or your, your child is there. Um, this is uh, really about um, helping them understand the overall project and meeting their teams and doing a fun activity that introduces them to each other. 
um, and, and really making sure that they kind of feel good coming in and they have a good first uh, introduction to each other. To gain access to Microsoft Teams, each participant is provided an account to utilize during the program. This is sent to them via email. Um, so please, if you did not receive that and you have not been able to get into the system, you need to reach out to us as soon as possible at cap at wctd.org. That's right here on the slide. They'll be doing a mind mapping activity during my, uh, Monday's session. It's really a great way to, to do introductions uh, to each other. Um, this is what a conceptual mind map looks like. We're going to be using an online digital tool to do this this year. Uh, it'll be lots of fun. This is uh, most of our students who participate say this is the best activity they do because it really kind of breaks the ice and helps them feel comfortable and get to know who they're going to be working with for the weekend. Our mentors are there to uh, they're there to ensure the teams are working together, they're staying on task, they're meeting goals, and that every team member has a voice in the overall project design and execution of building their websites. Um, mentors are trained to be supportive coaches during the program to help the students manage time. They are not there to teach the students. They are there to help support them and be coaches for them. This is a student-centric, student-run program. So it's totally up to the teams to execute and deliver. Uh, if they need help, the mentors can help them um, by guiding them to the office hours and getting uh, instructors and mentor and then uh, other resources to help support them. Some mentors may have coding skills and may be able to help, but they are instructed to not give answers directly, but to help students find the answers because we're teaching them how to learn. And that's a really important part of what our program is about. Just want to cover some of the group activities that, and when they'll be taking place. Um, and so the you, you have a sense of when the mentors will be involved in these activities and the mentors will not. So mentors may be participating in them. They are, it's an optional for them. They don't, you know, they don't have to stay through midnight. <laughs> um, they can uh, step off and, and the other students can be doing the activities. So just for your awareness, our mentors have optional times when they'll be present with the students and there'll be times when the students will be working independently. These are some of the activities they'll be doing. We'll be doing a typing competition where students will get to um, you know, earn some uh, prizes and we really need them to be better typers. To be Coding needs to be typing and a lot of schools today are not teaching typing and so we're trying to improve their typing skills so they're more efficient and more productive. Kahoot, if you're not familiar with that, it's a really fun game uh, and we're gonna, we've got customized questions out there that align to uh, computer science questions and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We'll do being a crossword puzzle on, again, on this, again, it's all about reinforcing vocabulary and getting their vocabulary up for computer science and for modern workforce um, language and skills. Bingo, again, we're going to just have some fun. Um, we'll be randomly generating uh, these, um, playing this game. It's, it's just a fun online game. We want to mix it up. You know, we want to make sure that we get them engaged online. It's tough when we're doing this virtually. And so all of these games have been strategically placed and timed throughout the program to, to give them prizes, to encourage them to stay engaged online with their teams and to really, um, you know, have a fun weekend. Um, and then Unlock the Box is another activity that's, this is a new platform that we'll be beta testing with our students. It was designed by our uh, for-profit Nebula Academy and designed really to drive a um, revenue stream for scholarships for our programs um, for We Connect the Dots. So we're excited to, to show your, to introduce this this year um, for the students to be able to actually do our Unlock the Box activity, which we've done traditionally in the past where they have a physical box and locks and they have to solve some really difficult problems to unlock the locks, to find the combination locks. And they'll be doing this in an online platform this year. So it'll be really fun. We'll be talking about Agile and Kanban. Uh, this is uh, part of um, the application development life cycle and they'll be learning about this in a fun activity um, where they'll be working together and learning about what, you know, um, kind of sharing their thoughts and ideas and brainstorming th through this activity and shaping their business concept, shaping their, their mission statement, whether it's going to be a for-profit or not-for-profit or social enterprise or a blend of all those things. Um, this is something they'll uncover through this process that we're going to be doing through this activity uh, and this activity will take place on Friday evening. Um, they'll be thinking about how they're going to change the world, you know, what problem they want to solve, um, what issues would the company or organization address, um, what's their proposed solution. If they have a product, um, they'll use the 3D modeling to do that. 
Um, how will they, um, you know, how will that be represented on their website? What sorts of other technology tools um, can they provide for their audiences? And, and again, how will their concept be sustainable long term? And these are things that they're going to address in their presentation. And of course, with the judges judging them. The idea is to create a conceptual business. It doesn't have to be a real business. It can be conceptual, meaning that maybe it couldn't happen today, but in the future it could. We want to really get them stretching and, and really getting out, get their thinking about what might be possible. And, and every year we do this, we are just blown away by what students are able to conceptualize and create. Um, and so we're excited to see what they do this year. Um, but again, it must solve a social good using the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and it can be a for-profit or not-for-profit uh, model. Here are some of the things they're gonna learn or some of the tools they're gonna learn. They're gonna learn how to use Office 365 online. If they don't know how to use that today, they will by the end of the weekend. Um, they will learn how to use GitHub, GitHub pretty well. Um, they'll use Visual Studio Code depending on what level they're coming into and Code Sandbox, again, depending on what level they're coming into. Uh, most of the students coming into level one will be using Code Sandbox and the students in level two and three will most likely be using Visual Studio Code. Uh, and then of course, um, they'll be learning to use Microsoft Teams and a lot of other stuff, but these are the core things that they'll be learning how to use. Our instructors, Chris Gomez is doing level one, uh, level two is Carrie Schatz, and level three is John Wurgo. I'm gonna leave these slides up. I've got a little bit about Chris uh, here. Chris Gomez is our lead instructor for level one. Chris has been a software developer for over 20 years. He's amazing. He's been volunteering for years for us for this program. Um, so this is his sixth year doing this with us. Uh, and he has uh, works in, with students and other programs in Philly. He's out of Philadelphia uh, area. And you can learn more about Chris at chrisgomez.com. Um, but we're excited to have Chris with us again this year. Carrie Schatz has been with us for probably about four years, I think, three or four years. Uh, Carrie came in involved in the program and we, we had to start evolving our, our competencies for the students and taking them beyond just HTML and CSS. So Carrie is our JavaScript instructor. She's amazing. The kids love her. Um, she's really relatable, especially you know having a female instructor is important for us, especially for the girls bringing into the program. Um, she works for Adobe Systems, and so she's a very talented woman and has lots of uh, experience with development. And then John Wargo, who's been with us for um, probably same length of time as Carrie has, two, three, three or four years, can't remember all the time frames now. Uh, they both came in together to help us do our advanced web development stuff. Um, and we've learned a lot from them and they've learned a lot from us. <laughs> and so John's leading our level three instructor or students this year. And he is for engineer professional. He's a writer. He's published many books, phenomenal instructors that you have with us this year. And uh, we're looking forward to your students learning a lot from them. Now, a little bit about the project goals for, and through this rubric, we're gonna show your students uh, um, will be able to, you know, they'll learn this and they'll get more detail. I'm not gonna go through every single minute detail about this, just wanted to make you aware that this is what the judges will be using to score the students in their websites and their presentations. So there's components in here that cover the actual project and we'll get into details with the students on this and answer all their questions about it. And then we'll be getting into more presentation scoring as we get further into the rubric. They have to, you know, they'll understand all the aspects of the rubric and what the judges, how the judges will be scoring them for this. We're encouraging through the rubric to get the students to cross collaborate with other teams. And that's really important in today's workforce. Employers want people who can work in their own teams and work outside of their teams. And that's part of what we're teaching in this program. So that they can learn how to engage with other people to get perspective, run the ideas by them, get other people's opinions and thoughts and learn how to learn from each other and learn what innovation is all about. This isn't about stealing somebody's ideas. This is about gaining insight from others and making your product or your idea even better. And so they'll learn, they'll be encouraged to do that across the teams. And they have to tell that story and do their presentations about how they worked with other teams, what they learned, what they shared maybe. All those aspects are part of the rubric. And again, it's, it's trying to create the right behavior here. And then how well did they prepare and practice for their presentation so that they did a really good job and it did. Was it smooth? Was it not? Did they articulate their messaging well? It, these are really important opportunities for students to build confidence in public speaking. We encourage them with prizes. <laughs> so first place is a projector, second place is a uh, smart display clock, um, and then third place is a smart notebook. We um, These were all selected by our CAP team, our Community Ambassador students, um, and we're excited that, um, to have those these prizes this year for all three levels. There will be prizes for the first place, second place, and third place in level one, level two, and level three. All students
students in the team will get the, the uh, winning teams will get this set, shipped to their houses. We are not sending; the, they will not get these on that day. They will. We know their addresses. We will be shipping these out to the students post um, the program wrap up. We will have digital cards during the program for prizes, and the students will be able to um, get those cards immediately. We'll be having bragging sessions in our chats about who wins. So we're excited to have some e cards for the students this year, and there'll be various different types of e cards. All the students who participate in the weekend program will receive um, a backpack, a mask, and a t-shirt shipped to their shipped to their homes or at a pickup location, depending on the students and where they live. We'll be sharing that information with you once the program is started and the students are actually attending. We did this because normally when the students attend this in person, they walk in the door, they get this stuff, they stay for the weekend. It's hard for us to do that this year, so we don't want to be shifting out backpacks and gifts and stuff to students who don't show up. So. They've got to show up. They have to have it be in attendance all weekend in order to get these prizes. So we will be doing that through our mentors. And we want to make sure that's very clear with the students. You don't show up. You don't, you don't participate in the amount of time that the mentors feel that you, you should be. Um, they're going to be assessing that. Then they won't be allowed to compete and present and compete for prizes. The students will present online. You'll get more details on this. You will be invited as a parent. Um, the students will be watching their peers present and then presenting themselves. They'll have a 10 minute presentation and then five minutes for the judges to ask questions. And again, you'll receive the invite on the 29th to this session. The mentors will be taking attendance. They'll be flagging students who are late, if they left early. Um, all of that will be recorded and based on the student's participation, will determine whether they can compete and they're finishing their post assessments. If the student does not participate actively in the weekend, they will not be allowed to compete in the final presentations. During the weekend, um, we're gonna be breaking and going uh, back and forth. We'll be asking the students to put timers on their phones to remind them to come back in if they break for lunch or whatever it might be for next sessions coming up. Mentors, again, will be responsible for the teams each day. They'll be make sure they take attendance after lunches, breaks, and, and breakfasts, and all that stuff. How do you reach us um, during the weekend? Uh, this The best way to get a hold of us is cap at wct.org. It's a distribution list. A lot of our team members will be watching that. We'll be monitoring it regularly. So if you have a question, you have an issue, you want to bring it to our attention, please do not hesitate to communicate with us. We want to hear from you. If you feel like there's a problem going on, your student's not you know, feeling like they're engaged, you, we don't. We don't know. If you don't tell us, we won't know. We're going to be, you know, checking with students constantly online and, and, and checking in with our mentors to make sure everything's going well. It, it's challenging, as you can imagine, but we will do our best. We're we're good at this. We do this all the time with our our um in our for profit. We teach online all the time, so we're used to this. We did a summer program this summer, and it went really really well. And so this is not our first um, rodeo here, but it is the first for this particular program. So we. We want to make sure that it goes really well and that we can prove our success in this. And, it's, and, not, and the success really is, did, your, did you have a good time? <laughs> did your child have a good time? Did they learn a lot? Did they come away feeling positive about and more confident in their coding skills? That's what we want for, your, for yourself as a student or your child if you're a parent watching this. So thank you for listening. I know this was probably fast. I talk fast. I apologize for that. Watch it again if you need to. Slow it down, whatever you need to do. But hopefully you, um, you'll, 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 this will be valuable to you. You'll appreciate us spending the time doing this for you. And we're excited, super, super excited to have your child participate or have your, have, to have you with us as a student um, this year in this amazing program. Thanks again and have a great rest of your weekend.